Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Andre Lanza. I am the sales specialist for air co-reactors and uh, line traps. I am located in North America, most, most specifically in Clearwater in Florida. And uh, first of all, thank you for your time and your attention just us today. So just quick introduction of myself before I talk a little bit about the product. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a sales specialist. I've been with G for the last 11 years, uh, working and designing reactors and line traps uh, for our factory, which is located in Brazil. And my focus is uh, our market in North America. But uh, I would like to bring to our attention that we do have uh, uh, several sales uh, team and people located in different parts of the world. So to us with any requests that you may have. So I'm an electrical engineer. I've been doing designs for all this time. We have a graduation in uh, education and marketing. I don't know if you noticed, uh, I do have an accent. So my origin is Brazil, uh, where the factory is located. So this is my background, and this is where I came from. So uh, this is the agenda for today. But before I talk about the items, I just want to mention a few things. Uh, this is uh, technical training. Uh, I will do and I will mention uh, technical details of uh, air core dry type technology, although I'm not going to mention all the small and specific details for our GE reactors due to two main reasons. One is the time, uh, we only have an hour and uh, this would take a long time. And of course, that uh, uh, we do filter the list of participants in this call, but we need to be careful as well because uh, it's impossible to predict who is trying. This is not going to be a sales presentation, a sales pitch, so I will focus on the technical side, so I will mention a little bit about our factory and what we do. So this is the technical training, Basics of reactors type. So, uh, as Ash mentioned, please feel free to send your questions. I will spend the five to ten minutes uh, by the end of the call. I would love to uh, see your questions. The thing that I most uh, miss is not to be in front of you, but uh, at least uh, with the technology, we can bring some uh, information to you. So, going to today's agenda, uh, we are going to talk about what is an air core reactor? Uh, what is an air core reactor? Also, the applications, uh, why they're used, why they're needed. And uh, we are going to spend some time on substation design and mainly magnetic field. We got a lot of questions about uh, uh, magnetic field concerns. And uh, I'll try to answer some questions uh, throughout my presentation. And if I don't answer, I will uh, spend some time uh, by the end of this. So uh, let me start with a very simple concept of uh, what is an air core reactor, or actually what is a reactor. Uh, we're talking about all types here, dry type, uh, oil immersed, iron core. So <clears throat> reactor first, there are different names for the, set, for the same product. They can be called as a coil, they can be called as an inductor. Uh, there are some, there is some confusion of a reactor. Sometimes uh, I do get got some uh, questions about is this related to nuclear uh, friction fusion? No, this is a simple uh, coil or inductor. So what is a coil or what is a uh, inductor or, or a reactor? So basically it's a, it's a passive device and there are two terminals uh, on this device. I tell my customers, my colleagues, that this is a very simple, sometimes boring type of equipment because there are only two terminals, no moving parts. Uh, it doesn't explode. It doesn't catch fire. Uh, it's just a big uh, cylinder-shaped gray thing that goes on the substation or inside an industry. So, yes, that's basically an air core reactor, but there are several advantages of uh, of this technology that we use, which I'm, I'm going to mention later. So it is a passive device, two terminals. It stores energy in form of 
uh, magnetic field. So if you think about a capacitor, a capacitor, power capacitor would uh, store energy in form and as an electrical field. It battery would uh, store energy and deliver energy in form of chemical react, uh, reactions, and the reactor then stores energy in form of a uh, magnetic field. So that's the first concept. Reactors they they typically have low impedance in low frequency. They have high impedance in high frequency. That's a also very important concept for reactors, inductors. Uh, the construction of a reactor, especially for an air core type, it's very simple, but I'll just talk about general construction for all technologies. So if you ask, what is a reactor? How does it look like inside? It's basically uh, two terminals, and between these two terminals, you have uh, a conductive material, which could be any type of conductive material, in the past, it was very common to use copper wires, copper cables. Nowadays, uh, we see more and more aluminum. Reason for that is because it reduces weight and also reduces costs. So there is a conduct material which is shaped in a rectangle or in a wire or a cable, uh, like a conductor. And uh, it's typically cylindrical shaped. And uh, if you look from the, tap, from the top, it will be several concentric circles. If you look from the side, it would look like a spiral. So you have a, a wire, uh, just to keep it simple, a wire that goes from one of the terminals to the other terminal in a spiral shape. And uh, uh, this conductive material would then conduct something, which is current. So if there is current flowing through this coil reactor, uh, this current creates a magnetic field, and uh, this magnetic field is the reaction of that current flowing through the conductive material that I mentioned. So when we're talking about reactors, magnetic field will be one of the most important aspects of the design. Uh, the magnetic field depends uh, basically on how much current flows through the reactor, and also depends on the uh, inductance or the impedance of this reactor. The inductance or impedance of the reactor depends on how many uh, turns there are uh, inside of that coil. So what is a turn? Then comes the next question. I mentioned about the conductive material, the aluminum, for example. These wires, or this wire, it's separate between uh, uh, each other with some kind of insulation material. In the past, air was used as insulation material. Nowadays, we have a paper, we have plastic, we have different type of uh, insulations. So by not having these two wires touching each other, that isolates the wires, and that creates then a turn. So, Neither reactor with more impedance means that the reactor will have more turns, more inductance. More impedance means taller reactors. Uh, more magnetic field means uh, main, more power, more current, and more inductance flowing through. So there are several concepts uh, that uh, shapes uh, the, the equipment, and uh, we got uh, some questions before the call uh, asking about sizing. Okay, so what do you need to tell us if you want us to size the correct size of reactor uh, or if you want uh, an offer for it? Basically, we need to know the current, the voltage, the power rating, which is calculated based on the current voltage and impedance, uh, the application, and the conditions that these reactors are going to be installed at. Just quick on each one of these, current. The, the current will impact on the size of the conductive material, or basically on the cross-section. More current means that you need more cross-section, you need more area to conduct that current. The voltage depends, the voltage will impact on the insulation of the material that goes between the turns. Voltage impacts also 
on the size, the, the clearances outside the surface of the reactor, voltage impacts on the BIL, uh, basic impulse level, and, uh, and et cetera. The power rating depends basically on the current and the impedance that flows through the coil. So it can be calculated based on that. More power means more higher magnetic field. The application is basically, why do we need these reactors? Are we going to use to limit current? Are they working as a filter? Or maybe are we putting these on an HVDC line to smooth uh, the, the current? So the application will tell us a lot about how we design safety margins and how they look like. And lastly, the environmental conditions. That's very important because we have reactors that are installed in Brazil, which is a tropical place. We have uh, reactors that are install installed in Saudi, which is a, a desert area. And we have reactors that are installed in Canada, which is a minus 45 or minus 50 C uh, uh, region. So for each one of these regions, there are some special design criteria that we need to follow. And also we cannot forget about 150 miles, uh, miles per hour wind conditions in Florida, or maybe high seismic in California, or even uh, another example, the air core reactors, they may require some uh, large space to fit them. So we need to know how and where these reactors uh, are going to be installed so we can then uh, design it to fit on your application. So a lot of information for one slide only, but uh, that's basically the basics. Uh, I could spend a few more minutes talking about it, but uh, I need to move to the next one. So why using air core reactors? Why not using iron core dry type and the iron core oil immersed? So let me talk a little bit about, about each one of these applications and then I will spend uh, more time on the air core dry type. So the first one, iron core oil immersed, as the name says, the reactor has an iron core. So what means having an iron core? So the main uh, difference is that an air core is, uh, as the name says, that has no core. And the iron core, it's uh, basically a, a forced path that's placed right in the center of the coil. And this path basically keeps the magnetic, magnetic field inside of it. So it creates a, like a, how, how I would say, high permeability, low uh, uh, impedance path uh, for the magnetic field. So that's the first difference. Uh, constructively same, uh, iron core, they are much heavier, larger than uh, the dry type air core but there are reasons for having the iron core. So the second thing is uh, oil. Why this solution has oil? Uh, the main thing is related to isolation, like the oil con in conjunction with the paper, it creates uh, insulation uh, between turns and also between the core to uh, the base tank. And this is needed for very high, extra high voltage application. So there is a special need for oil, iron core, oil immersed type of reactors. The second one is iron core dry type. The main difference is that it has an iron core, but it doesn't have oil. The main application for this type of technology would be to uh, low voltage or where you need to fit a reactor in a very small area. So again, it has an iron core, you need to keep the magnetic, magnetic field inside of this core, and also uh, it needs to be dry type and fit inside like a, an enclosure or very limited space. So then comes the third technology, air core dry type, which I'm going to focus today. So why using air core dry type and not using the other two technologies? First, it depends on the application. The main characteristic of this technology is not having an iron core. And that means that uh, uh, an iron core can saturate in very high when the reactor is exposed to very high current. For example, uh, fault current limiting reactors. If the iron core reactor faces a fault current, let's say 20, 30 kA, there is just 
an amount of magnetic field that that core can withstand. If it exceeds that, it saturates the core and it basically changes the impedance of the reactor when it, the impedance is mostly needed during the fault to limit it. So the air core dry type, it's a very common technology to use to add impedance to block uh, fault current basically because there is no core and there, there is no core saturation and there is no impedance change. So this is related to the application. Now let's talk about the construction of the equipment. The air core dry type, it's very simple construction. It's basically made of uh, fiberglass encapsulated in uh, epoxy resin. The wire that I mentioned before, the conductive material, it's all encapsulated in this fiberglass and epoxy material. And reason for that is to uh, protect the insulation, protect the wire from uh, the outside world, like uh, not allowing water, humidity, sunlight, UV, etc., to reach out inside the, the wire and the insulation. And uh, basically that's it. So it's a round, big a cylinder uh, made of fiberglass, aluminum, and epoxy. Very robust technology. Uh, there are no parts to fail. Uh, very light design compared to the other ones. And of course, if, if the design is light, if the design is simple, we can only expect that the cost will be much more competitive than the other solutions. The main, uh, also main advantage of air core dry type compared to the oil immersed technology would then be uh, the, uh, the, the presence or not of oil. So if the air core dry type doesn't have oil, that's excellent for uh, the environmental, so there's no leakage uh, risk. And of course, there is no risk of explosion and the fire. There are more advantages which I'm going to mention on, during the presentation. So let us talk about a few characteristics of the reactor really quick here. So reactors, they can be from a very small power rating to very large power rating, like few K bars to 100 or maybe more M bars per, per coil. And we could have a phase with several coils connected in series, for example. They can be very small in terms of price, like $1,000, but they can be more than $300,000, $400,000 per coil. They can weigh a few kilograms or pounds to 20 or 40,000 pounds uh, per coil. There are different types of construction materials. Uh, I'm mentioning here about the insulation class, B, F, or H. And uh, if I if I can recommend something to you, uh, to the users or to the ones that are specifying the reactors, it's insulation is uh, one of the most, if not the most important material that goes inside of a reactor. So if you want to know if you're buying a good product, ask about the insulation, ask about the quality, the supplier, the origin, because that, that's basically what's going to drive the design and, to, and confirm that if, if it's going to last for 30 years and more. Again, I'm not going to mention of what GE is doing, but uh, this is uh, very important. Insulation material that uh, you use, that we use in this case. There are different types of conductive materials, uh, aluminum profiles, uh, single wires, stranded cables, flat transposed, continuous transposed cables. So all of these cables, they are used, or all of these conductive materials, they are used to build the reactors. And uh, my job, it's actually to select the best technology that fits to your specification. So you don't need to specify to us uh, the type of wires. Uh, basically, you specify the size of the reactors, and our job would be to give you the most competitive uh, solution. And of course, they are designed to meet the customer standards and also international standards like IEEE, IEC, and et cetera. So just a few improvements uh, that we have done, uh, and this is also to, uh, to call your attention on uh, uh, if you tell us what you need, we can try to improve and change what we do and bring something new to the market. So uh, low losses. It, it was very important to the market to come up with a, a new technology that would uh, bring losses of reactors down. And uh, yes, there are flat transposed, continuous transposed cables 
uh, technology being offered to the market, bringing the losses down. Uh, traditionally, high voltage, extra high voltage reactors, shunt reactors, they were oil filled, uh, iron core, the first one that I showed on the slides before. Now they've been replaced uh, more and more. That's a new trend to have them made of our, uh, dry type air core design. So we have reached the 345 kV uh, level. And uh, this is just an example of uh, some innovation that we're doing. Uh, we had designed a GE made a fiberglass cage. So for example, an open substation or inside a, a factory or a room that uh, you have uh, uh, safety concerns, we can provide like a fiberglass cage to avoid the people touching and getting closer to the reactors. The, the advantage of fiberglass, uh, I'll explain later when I talk about magnetic field, but that, that's a very good uh, innovation uh, when working with uh, reactors. Just quick here uh, on the portfolio. Different from like a circuit break or, or instrument transformer, like reactors, they are not divided by uh, voltage levels uh, like uh, the CT or brick would be. We created here then two families. One it's called series reactors and another family it's called shunt reactors. So as the name says, series reactors, they are series connected to the line. The main uh, characteristic of a series reactor is what is actually the voltage that's applied between the, the two terminals of, of the equipment. The voltage is basically the current that flows through that reactor multiplied by the impedance, uh, what we call voltage drop. Uh, compared to a shunt reactor, uh, this voltage is much, much lower. And why I'm saying that, a shunt reactor is connected on the full potential of the line. So if you have a 230 kV line, you have that shunt reactor co connected to full phase to ground voltage of that 230 kV line. So the voltage stress on a shunt reactor is much higher than on a series reactor. So that's why we divide it into two families. You'll probably notice that the series reactor, they are wider and shorter, and the shunt reactors, they are thinner and taller. The reason for that is because of the voltage and the voltage stress and insulation requirements that shunt reactors require that the series reactors do, do not require. So just to explain the, the squares here, Traditionally, shunt reactors with voltage level lower than 5 kV, it's an iron core, dry type, or oil immersed. And in the past, core uh, type were used mainly at 34.5 kV and below, connected to tertiary of power transformers, uh, let's say 10, 15 years ago. More and more, we see dry type air core being connected to 115, 230, 440, even 500 kV. So that's a new trend, and uh, that's a new change on the product. And more and more, we see air core dry type being installed in higher voltage levels, which was a traditional oil field market. So this is a video about our factory, uh, just to show you how uh, we built the product. So, uh, 
this is just a quick slide uh, about our factory. Just want to mention that it's located in Brazil. We've been manufacturing reactors since uh, 1976, and uh, this is a well-known factory uh, in the world, just uh, as a uh, reference to you. Uh, let's talk about applications. So there are many applications, and uh, unfortunately, I will not have time to talk about all of them, but this slide is, again, for reference. And uh, you, know, you can see that there are many applications uh, from generation to delivery, power delivery, but I'm going to focus on the main ones, uh, most common ones. So the first one, it's a current limiting reactor or fault current limiting reactor. This is basically uh, an impedance that's added to the system to limit short circuit fault currents. So why am I showing a picture of a circuit breaker? So the idea here is behind it. Uh, uh, when there is an existing substation and uh, the fault levels, short, short circuit level, it's uh, too high, you can actually manage uh, or reduce the fault level uh, by adding extra impedance to the system, uh, and that would not require then to replace all the switching device and all the existing equipment that you have on that existing substation. So by adding impedance, you can uh, save a lot of money uh, then reinvesting on all new switching device. Of course, that uh, when you're adding impedance to the system, we are also adding losses and the voltage drop. So there is a, a capital like investment plan study that needs to be done to see if the losses for the reactors would make, make more sense than spending all that money on new switching device. So this is just an example of a main bus, feeder reactors study and uh, if it would make sense to put them on 13.8 kV feeders, for example, or on the main bus, let's say 130 kV bus. So I, I would like to spend a little bit of time on the high voltage shunt reactors. I did mention that uh, uh, the oil field, uh, they were traditionally applied for extra high voltage levels, and we've been seeing more and more uh, air core dry type being used. Reason for that is that uh, First, uh, the dry type air core does not have oil, so there's no issues in terms of environmental risk or uh, impact in terms of fire and explosion. Uh, it's very simple technology, very easy to install, basically placing coils on top of insulators and connecting terminals. There is no oil treatment, so an oil field unit may require days or weeks for oil treatment and inspection, gas inspection. The air, air core dry type has none of that. And uh, basically, it's a maintenance-free technology. So you can run these reactors for 30 years with basically no maintenance. Uh, this is a picture of a traditional uh, oil field, and I just wanted to show the base tank of it because uh, just to create that base containment tank, it requires a lot of energy, time, and money. So there are several layers of materials, and uh, uh, it's quite expensive. Uh, and this is just to contain a leakage. And if there is a leakage, then you have to basically change and replace some of these materials, which can also be very expensive. If you're designing, for example, a pad for an air core reactor, the only precaution that you would need to have is related to the magnetic field, which I'm going to mention on the next slide. But this is uh, how simple the air core technology is compared to an oil field unit. Now, you should ask me, uh, okay, so air core dry type makes a lot of sense to use, right? It's uh, most probably cost effective, lower price, uh, no maintenance, simple design, no failure. So why do we still have the traditional oil field iron core design? So uh, to be honest with you, the reason it's the footprint. The air core dry type may require more space than the traditional oil field, and mainly because of the magnetic field of the equipment. Uh, physically, they have similar sizes, but if we consider the magnetic field, yes, the dry type air core may require some extra space and clearances, but the message here is if it's a green field, if it's a new installation, most probably the air core dry type will be the best solution for voltage up to 500 kV. And uh, typical installation, it's a breaker, uh, switching device, uh, grounding switch, 
the reactors, we, as we see in the pictures, and protection CTs and VTs. Uh, this is a typical installation, and uh, just wanted to show the picture to you. Now, talking a little bit about uh, uh, capacitor banks. So we do have reactors that are installed uh, with cap banks, and the reason for that is to uh, limit the inrush, outrush, or back-to-back -back current of it. Uh, this slide is just like a more uh, practical slide, comparing a cap bank being switched with uh, reactors, uh, not having reactors, being switched with a uh, uh, type of switcher with resistors, or with a synchronous breaker. So what I'm trying to show here is that uh, not having reactors in a cap bank may be an issue uh, for the switching device and actually also for the cap bank. So the reactors are added to limit the I0 and the F0, the frequency, the initial frequency on, uh, on transient. And, uh, but there is just a limit uh, how much it can limit. The resistors, they do limit it uh, further than the reactors, but of course uh, the price can be prohibitive and same for synchronous uh, circuit breaker. So the big question here is how much you want to spend to reach and to limit the, the cap banks and switch devices to uh, the limits that it can withstand. So we may, take in, we may be talking about uh, some thousands of dollars, uh, tens of thousands of dollars, or maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the solution. So all of these technologies will work. It basically depends on how much investment the user is uh, uh, willing to, to have. Reactors, they do work very well, and they are a very reliable, reliable solution with basically zero failure rate. And uh, lastly, the neutral grounding reactor, which is basically a, a fault current limiting reactor, but in this, in this case, it's, re it's installed in the neutral of a power transformer. Most of the faults, they are phase to ground, so it makes sense uh, to have an uh, impedance placed on the ground of the, the transformer in this case to limit, again, the fault current of the, of the system. There are many and more applications, for example, filter reactors, HVDC, SVC, and STATCONs. Unfortunately, uh, I'll have no time to mention about them. There are some other webinars in the GE website that talks about these, specifically about these applications, especially for filters, which are reactors combined with capacitor mix. So talking about substation design. So adding a reactor to the system means that you're going to add an impedance. And when there is an impedance in the system, you create, and when there's current flowing on the impedance, uh, it creates losses. The reactor, it's an inductance, uh, so it's a reactance that it's added to the system. So we also need to think about uh, the load, the TRV issues that an inductance may cause by adding, by being added to the system. Impedance also causes voltage drop, uh, current flowing through the reactor through the impedance causes the voltage drop. Also, you may have issues with noise, especially for filter reactors. If there is very high content of harmonics, the reactors can be very noisy. Like a typical reactor has a 55 to 60 dB A sound emission. A filter reactor may have a 90, 100 dBA, so they can be very noisy. And uh, the main uh, concern with uh, reactors is the magnetic field. So, uh, and this is what I'm going to spend some time on the next slides. So this is just showing uh, the type of installations that we have. The reactors can be outdoor, they can be inside a building, inside an enclosure, they can be side by side, they can be stacked, double stacked. So there are several and different types of installations. We just ask you to let us know how they're going to be installed and we will offer you the most convenient or the which, whichever makes more sense. So the magnetic field, as I mentioned on my first slides, they depend, uh, the magnetic field depends on the, the current that's flowing through the reactor, the impedance or basically the power rating of that coil. So we are always going to provide to you uh, the magnetic field clearances with our proposal and with our drawings. So this is something that we must provide because there is no way that you can calculate it. 
And I, I, I say, there is no way. Yes, there is a way. There are uh, pages and pages of formula. But basically, this is what our software is doing for you. We get your specifications, we calculate it to you, and we give you back well, what are the magnetic clearances. So basically, there are two areas that we need to be concerned, which is uh, magnetic parts forming closed loops and magnetic parts not forming closed loops. These two rectangles that I, we show on the left-hand side. So this is, again, it's going to be provided with our proposal. But basically, you need to be uh, concerned about what is a closed loop. Closed loop, it's like if you imagine a ring uh, or a fence that uh, there are several rings. That's a closed loop. And what happens if you have magnetic field flowing through that? If there is magnetic field flowing through a closed loop, that creates that inducts current. That current flows through that ring and creates heat. And uh, that can be a concern, like people touching a fence getting burned or a, even worse, getting like an electrical shock. Uh, this could also increase temperature on other equipment that are surrounding the reactors. For example, uh, steel post structure or cause a bad reading on a CT that also has a core. So again, magnetic fields will always be provided by us. The clearances are provided by us. And if there is still any questions about uh, the magnetic fields, we can run, for example, reports that are shown on the right-hand side of it, very detailed magnetic field reports. We just need to, to know how you're planning to install them and your concerns. Uh, the main uh, issue that we notice is that uh, how the pads, the concrete pads are designed. It's common to see uh, customers uh, considering the regular steel uh, rebars, which is okay but we, we would need to create or to add some spacers between the coil to the ground. If there is a vertical clearance, for example, uh, you cannot, if you cannot have spacers between the reactor and the coil, we could use different solutions, for example, adding uh, some type of insulation material between rebars or even, uh, worst case, using a fiberglass type of uh, reinforcement on the base. So on the very right uh, hand of the, this picture, of this slide, we see a picture, a thermal scan of a reactor, and we can see uh, a closed loop. We can see a, a lighter yellowish uh, color, meaning that there was current flowing through that part. Uh, the design of the pedestal was not correct, and that caused a hot spot in, for that particular application. So the right way would be to cut a piece of that, open the loop to avoid current circulating through it. So there are several ways to do the same thing, uh, and we can provide the recommendations to you. Really quick on what's uh, the reactor causing to human body. Basically, there is a document called ICNERP. Uh, it's available online. It's open to all of us. It's a document written by doctors and electrical engineers and uh, several other uh, professions. So the summary is that there is no evidence that a magnetic field can cause uh, impacts to human body, but they do also uh, they don't recommend us to being exposed to magnetic field all the time. So they're just saying uh, avoid it as much as you can. And for the utilities and uh, uh, for us, like uh, the power equipment manufacturers, we do have some limits to respect. And these limits, uh, it's called right now as MC3 and MC4, and they are based on the I required line 2010. And uh, again, we can provide these calculations to you. The, the biggest concern here would be if someone, for example, is using a pacemaker and it's working around uh, a reactor. Yes, the magnetic field of a reactor can be so high that could impact on the pacemaker, change the pace, and cause a serious impact to that human being. So this is a more as a warning. Uh, we can provide the calculations, and also, we, for example, we could provide the warning signs, et cetera. So this is more for information. And really quick here on the accessories that we are providing, uh, uh, which are typically provided with the reactors. Reactors, they are basically the, the round shape, cylinder big thing. They are provided with uh, post insulators, which depends on the voltage level and BIL. They are also provided with uh, elevating structures or pedestals, 
The pad also depends on the magnetic clearance. They may depend also on electrical clearance or preference from the customer to have the rectus on ground or uh, isolated away from ground. So if you have a specification for pedestal safety requirements and etc., just let us know. We will provide the, the pedestals or elevating structures based on your needs. And uh, some reactors, they can be provided with uh, TAPs, inductance TAPs, like a minus plus 2% inductance TAP, for example, filter reactors. They can be provided with uh, top hats to uh, limit the flow of uh, uh, snow or pollution accumulation on top of it. Although the reactors are prepared to withstand uh, environmental conditions, this is just a, a way to uh, enhance the, the duration throughout the 30 years that I mentioned before. And they can also be provided with uh, bird protection because uh, if you think about it, uh, the reactors, they're going to run in a higher temperature than the ambient, especially in winter time. That's a very cozy uh, place for birds and animals to be in. So we could uh, then provide uh, uh, bird barrier protection so animals cannot get inside of the coil. So this is just for information as well. Reactors, they can be provided with noise shields if they're too loud. And uh, we do have some type of, some special type of uh, pedestals and simulations, especially for uh, high seismic, high wind areas. So all the designs verified by very sophisticated uh, engineering tools to make sure that uh, we will deliver the equipment to your region. So uh, I would like to uh, conclude using this slide then. Uh, the design of reactor, it's, uh, although it's a very simple product, uh, there are several uh, things that needs to be checked, especially the insulation of the design. Uh, there are some questions about the transient. Uh, uh, how do we design the reactors uh, when there's like a very frequent and very high voltage and, and transients. Like the design of the insulation, it depends on each and each case. Uh, we can get into the deep discussions about that uh, on, a, on, a later, uh, on a later section. But yes, there is a special design for uh, high frequent, uh, high voltage, uh, transient uh, issues. Uh, but I would like to say, insulation, it's one of the most important things uh, in, in when we're designing a reactor. So ask about it. Uh, we can uh, discuss about it. We can also discuss about our conservative uh, temperature de design, uh, meaning that uh, we'll never exceed first and we don't work closer to the limits. We prefer to work with uh, lower uh, temperature rise limits. So we guarantee that this product will last 30 years and more uh, uh, in the field. Uh, and, uh, well, we've been supplying reactors since 1976 uh, all, all over the world, since 1992 in the United States. We do have a great experience with uh, many customers all over the world, so please feel free to reach your uh, sales specialist contact. And if you're, don't, if you're not sure about who it is, feel free to go to our website, GE Grid, Grid Solutions website, and, uh, and send us a request and we'll contact you with, with more information. So uh, it is a lot of information for uh, 45 minutes. I'm aware of that. But again, feel free to reach us with any other follow-up questions and uh, we'll be glad to help you. So we are now reaching 45 minutes of presentation. Uh, I will transfer to Ashish and the team so we can start the Q&A uh, section. Thank you, Andre. Just a reminder that if you'd like to submit a question, please click the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen. Type your question in the text field and click Submit. Andre, the floor is yours. So let me uh, select here the, the first question. Just give me one minute. So first question is, what maintenance and testing procedures are recommended to better monitor and assess how air core reactors are holding up in the field? So that's actually a very good question. 
I mentioned about uh, uh, maintenance-free design. So one characteristic of the oil field uh, technology is that you can actually measure and monitor the gas uh, contamination of the tank. For an, an air core dry type design, there is no oil, there is no gas control. So basically, uh, there is, it's difficult to predict and see how uh, good the reactors are holding up at field. But there, yes, there is a way to do it. So reactors, they are designed to meet a thermal temperature uh, based on the insulation material that I mentioned before. So for example, class F, 155 degrees would be the maximum hotspot temperature. So what we recommend is like a by, by knowing the load of the reactor, because it may not be working on the uh, nominal load, you get a snapshot of the load, make a thermal scan of the reactor if it's into operation and connected, send to the supplier uh, the thermal scan and the load, and we will be able to calculate and see the calculations to see if the reactors are healthy. Now, if the reactors are not energized, you can uh, basically disconnect and ground it uh, from the system, and then you can measure the inductance and the impedance of that reactor and compare it to the test reports. That will tell you if there is internal failure and if the widening is uh, still in good uh, conditions. And uh, let me select another one here. Okay, let me answer this one. What is the, what is the main difference between a line trap and an air core reactor design? So the line trap is basically an air core reactor with a tuning device, what we call tuning device that goes inside of the air core. So it is line trap, it, it is an air core, but basically it has a connection, a parallel connection with capacitors, uh, resistors, and inductors, and this parallel connection creates a very interesting characteristic. For an air core with no tuning packs, it basically has a very high uh, impedance in high frequency, but when you add a tuning pack in parallel with the air core design, uh, it creates a completely different frequency response in high frequencies. So they are used as filters for power line carrier systems, but answering your question, uh, line it's an air core uh, technology impact design that goes inside, and just that and that is different. It's a filter for voltage, uh, high high frequency systems, power line carrier systems. So let me answer another one. Is there a non-magnetic rebar available? So we typically don't deal with the uh, the construction uh, of the of the site. But that's a very good point and question. Uh, to be honest, I think this is the first time that I see it, and we can uh, discuss more about it. Uh, we've been supplying, for example, a non-magnetic enclosure, the fiberglass enclosure that uh, uh, we mentioned before. Maybe yes, maybe we can also start uh, uh, discussing about uh, why not providing the material to build the rebar with uh, no magnetic field um, issues. So let me move to the next one. Is there any voltage level limitations for shunt reactors? Mean, means 245 kV, 145 kV level are also required the same or only we install in 500 kV system? So uh, I think that the question is, uh, for shunt reactors that are called dry type, is there a voltage level limitation? The answer today is yes, there is a voltage level limitation, which is around the 500, 550 kV, which basically uh, it's already very high. So air core dry type today covers basically all the uh, voltage levels available. Of course, that the 765 kV or 800 kV, it would still require and the traditional oil field uh, design. Let me select another one. So 
So the question is, have we made a 345 kV shunt reactor yet? Yes, the answer is yes, uh, we have a 345 kV. So can you tell us more about the low loss design? Uh, thank you for this question, very good uh, question indeed. So I mentioned about the four different type of uh, conductor materials that we have, like a squared shape, rectangle, rectangle shape, uh, profile or single wire or stranded cable or flat transposed cables. So for each one of these uh, uh, conductive materials or technologies, there is a, a particular characteristic and a particular application in terms of uh, uh, sizes. So for small reactors, we can design them based with uh, all of these four technologies. For very large reactors, let's say HVDC, or power flow reactors. These are very high uh, power, and uh, yes, the losses can be very high. So as we cannot change the material that we are using, for example, yes, we could use copper instead of aluminum, but just by adding copper to the design, that would uh, increase the price by three times, just because copper is extremely expensive. So the other way to change the losses of the reactor would then to turn it, it more efficient by changing the type or technology of the wires that goes inside of it. So uh, the most recent one is a flat transposed or continuous transposed cable technology, and it's similar to a transmission line. When there is line transposition, you're eliminating the mutual inductance between the wires you know, uh, in this case, and by eliminating that, you can design reactors that are uh, more, more compact, lighter, and also with lower losses. So it's a very neat technology which uh, uh, we're offering to the market. And again, uh, just let us know what are the losses requirements for that particular job, and we'll try to design the, the most competitive solution to you. Uh, so for example, give us uh, the dollar per kilowatt, if it's 4,000, 10,000, or 1,000. If you give this to us, we'll know which technology to use. Next question, uh, can we specify Q factor or it, it is better to GE to decide? So the answer is it depends. Like there are some specifications or some applications that we, there, are, there is a specific Q factor requirement. For example, filter reactors. So the Q factor is related to the uh, filtering aspect of that design. And uh, yes, for these type of applications, we would need to know exactly what is the Q factor that you, you need because uh, uh, we can change the design of the reactors for that specific Q factor. And uh, that, that actually may, has a uh, considerable uh, impact on it. So for other applications where a Q factor is not mandatory, I would say uh, you don't need to mention or to specify a Q factor just let, let us provide you what is the natural Q factor, but we need to remember, Q factor is related to the losses. It's basically the power divided by the losses of the reactor. So if you specify a Q factor that it's very high, means that we will be forced to use a flat transpose cable technology low loss, and we may also need to, to keep the reactors very cold to meet the Q factor requirement. So if you're sure about the Q factor, feel free to specify. If you're unsure, uh, just let us uh, uh, specify to you. And again, if it's related to losses, just provide us what is the dollar per kilowatt and we will bring the best, most competitive design to you. Uh, one more question. Can you can we use ERCO reactors for smoothing reactors in HPDC? The answer is, is, is yes, and actually in one of the pictures that we had, uh, this one, uh, this is showing uh, a smoothing reactor. Uh, I'm not sure about the voltage level, but maybe 300, 400 kV uh, continuous DC. And uh, Yes, they can be used for smoothing in uh, HPDC extremely high voltage uh, levels. 
and they, yes, they are used for smoothing application. This is a, a site in Canada, a very special uh, application. I'll select uh, one more question as we are running out of time. So let me. Uh, how we calculate the MVAR rating for the reactors? So I think this question may have two different answers. Like uh, the first answer and simple one, like you can calculate the MVAR rating basically by multiplying the impedance by the current uh, in the power of two. That basically gives you the power rating of that coil. But if you are asking about, for example, shunt reactor, shunt application, how much power you need to add to that transmission line or system, uh, the, the answer is like a, that uh, uh, you need actually to check your system, see how much uh, the characteristic of the load, how much capacitive it is, how much inductive power it's needed. And this is more like a system calculation to determine what is the size of that reactor that would then compensate uh, the line. I'm not sure if I answered the, the question, but uh, feel free to follow up with us and we will give you a more detailed answer. Uh, Ashish, with that, with that, I think uh, we are running out of time. I would like to uh, conclude it and transfer it back to you. And uh, thank you all for your presence today. Uh, really appreciate it. And again, feel free to contact us. Uh, it would be a pleasure to support you. Actually, we got a lot of questions uh, we'll try to answer uh, after the call. Thank you, Andre, and thank you, everyone, for attending. We look forward to seeing you again at our next webinar. This concludes today's session. Have a wonderful day.